Okay, so that first kill, he's made to slice his own throat with the knife maybe this far in. That is pretty fucking creepy. That really worked. And you see the whole thing, you know, they draw it out. That really worked. And, you know, I wouldn't classify it as, like, you know, torture porn kind of thing because it is still over pretty quickly and, yeah. The knocking over of the coffee cup was really awkward. I guess I could kind of buy that he was, you know, really tired, so, you know, he just, he doesn't think about where his hand is. He didn't seem upset, at least, you know. I would get if he was, like, angry and, like, no, this is real, but, no, you know, it's, he's maybe tired, okay, but they hadn't really built up that he was, like, knocking things over, you know. Maybe he could have knocked a knife over onto the floor earlier or something, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm really stressed out or something, you know, I'm, I'm tired. But he just knocks it over just so he, she can walk away, and we enter yet another really obvious dream. This movie does not do really all that well at the dreams being smoothed into, you know. The old franchise did really good at that, especially the original movie. That's the one I remember being good, anyway. Here, it's so obvious so much of the time, and even when it isn't obvious, too few of them are followed through upon, you know. Too often, nothing happens. They wake up on their own. So, not long after that happens, she seriously falls asleep at a funeral? Okay, I get that that's maybe not the most energetic situation, but seriously? That's just disrespectful. And then Sergeant Sim tells her that if she needs to talk, he's there. And later on, we have Quentin in the car. Wouldn't it have been... Maybe it would have been too on the nose, ironic, if Quentin had been the one to get in jail. Anyway. Quentin is like, you know, oh, that's my dad. I gotta go get in the car with him. Seriously, once, when he was pissed off at a dude, I saw him throw a knife right through his hand. I'm not gonna get on his bad side. Am I the only one who wants an entire movie of just Clancy Brown being the avenging father? Seriously. He fucking ruled. You know, that he, he was the one good thing about the flashback, you know. No, we're doing this, you know, just, and Frank, come out, Kruger! Fuck, he ruled. He was just so... Goddamn. The man even sort of made saying, mm-hmm, work, you know, sort of, a little bit. At the 22-minute point, and yes, I know, sort of, something happens not very long after, but anyway, at the 22-minute point, we've had three nightmares, two women waking up screaming, at first, I thought that it was maybe both of them being crisp, but I guess one of them was maybe Nancy, not Heather. Nancy. Anyway, see, that's how little this movie made an impact on me. I can't even tell the two women apart. Chris had no personality before she died, you know. Nancy sort of does, and I understand why she's, you know shut in and that kind of thing, because, you know, as it's made perfectly clear in this fucking movie, she was raped as a kid by Fred Krueger. Anyway, 22 minutes in, several nightmares, and she still doesn't think to contact someone. You know, at, you know, a minute and a half later or so, the guy's in her room, and he's like, you know, I can protect you, or, well, at first he doesn't even believe her, for some reason, but... Why do these people, fully knowing what's going on, not take any precautions? They keep making idiotic mistakes just to keep the film going. If I knew that I was being hurt in my sleep, that someone was hunting me in my sleep and something could maybe happen, I would kind of try to find someone... I mean, yes, she is researching and she's trying to find out what happened. But she doesn't seem to proactively seek someone to keep her awake. The obvious, the, the CGI is extremely obvious when C 
Kruger, like, attacks through the wall. Why did she even wake up there? She hadn't, like, seen him. It, it, they should have had her turn her head and, like, then scream and then wake up. That would have made sense. By the way, when she screams, was the mother standing outside the door waiting for her to wake up screaming? Seriously, she opens the door immediately. The movie just spends way too little time on almost everything it does. A little more on that after this. During the flashback, where we find out way too fucking much about Fred Krueger, when they're killing him, torching him, yes, it was nicely done, but we had an entire franchise before, and somehow it wasn't felt necessary that we needed to see that, so why does this 90-minute movie now decide... Anyway, it cuts from him burning to them outside, standing there cheering, you know, yeah! to naked Quentin. Seriously, did no one think that this would look fucking silly? It's not scary. It's not scary that he's in this setting, you know. It's... I get it, okay? He wanted to attract them to where Freddy's cave was because he was that confident that he could kill them and I guess they felt that without that there wouldn't be enough drive. Okay, accept it, but... Why? cut back to at least have a close-up of his face then, you know, have him see it and then react. But we see, you know, him stand there bare chest, I guess, for the ladies, which is fine, but no, it just, it looks really silly. The contrast is just, I really don't, I can barely imagine that they thought that that would have been scary to people. The movie is also fairly inconsistent about if the damage done in the dream actually carries through to the real world or not. Jesse really had the deck stacked against him with the, you know, he's there, he's got the blood on him, then he runs out, the fucking alarm goes, excuse me, off. You know, it's just, wow, that, yeah. I don't know if they felt they needed to counterweight that because, you know, he is, we know he's innocent, but they, you know, the cops don't quite believe it. and He's manhandled quite brutally. I hope that, you know, in real life when someone is resisting that little, they actually get treated just a little bit better, but could have been, you know, food coloring or something, you know, maybe he, I don't know. Anyway. I don't know if they felt they needed to counterweight that an innocent man was caught and not believed when he was said to be innocent, when he claimed to be innocent. But why did they spend so much time building up, you know, maybe Fred didn't actually do anything for the cave, you know, maybe we don't. I I was for pretty much buying into it. I thought that there was going to be some kind of explanation for the scratches, you know, that maybe... I don't know exactly, but, you know, somehow she got scratched by the garden thing, you know, maybe he turned around really quickly, I don't know. Anyway, then it turns out he wasn't innocent. I don't mind that I was wrong, that's not why I'm complaining about this, but it's a huge anticlimax because it means all that time, all that effort was for absolutely nothing. There's no, it's not like they're more at risk by being out there. It doesn't matter where they are if no one is waking them up, and earlier it wasn't even possible to wake someone up when they're, I mean, do you really think that Jesse could have woken up Chris or whatever the fuck her name was? I don't think so. You know, so if he had just had them in that deep of a, you know, but why spend that much energy and effort building up. You know, he even says, what do you think I did? I didn't do anything in the flashback and all that, you know. And the... Yeah, anyway. Why spend that much time just to show that, nope, he still was, you know. I'm gonna be doing a separate video on this just for the people who haven't watched this movie and to not spend too much time of this video talking about my thoughts on that. The near the end, with him revealing that he's kept her alive, uh, awake, that long, 
so long that she actually goes into a fucking coma. And he does not right say it, but maybe he's just going to torture her, just, you know, and rape her. That's pretty much a given. And not kill her. That is fucking chilly. That chilling. That just... That was the best thing about this movie. That was the greatest idea they had. And... You know, it pretty well worked. I, seriously, I had fucking chills when that was revealed. That just... Yeah. And the, the using the adrenaline to counterweight that. That was also a good enough idea. Her burning herself to keep herself awake, you know, that was, it, it was built up nicely enough, but then they spend way too little time doing it, and then right after she still falls asleep. You know, it should have, there should have been just a little bit more time between those two things, and I'm sorry, but they should have spent more, they should have shown us that she's in pain, you know, we're supposed to be feeling with her, so, you know, yeah. And the thing about, you know, how he can't get any more pills to stay awake by, because, yeah, oh, I'm out of refills, I'm sorry, I don't really feel, I should really call the doctor, you know, that whole thing, and, you know, Quentin is like, dude, my girlfriend's out in the car, she falls asleep, she's gonna die, if I fall asleep, I'm gonna die, give me the fucking pills, now, we do not have time for this. That was a pretty good, um, you know, and it didn't paint anyone to be the bad guy, you know. The guy's just doing his job. He doesn't want, you know, a lawsuit or to be fired because he gave someone, you know, not over-the-counter drugs when they maybe shouldn't have been given them. And Quentin is also, you know, he can't explain the situation, so what, what to do, you know. Why is Freddy not entering all their dreams? I mean, that... I don't remember which of the chicks you know, woke up screaming first, but she clearly made it through the rest of the night okay, you know. And it really doesn't make sense that the parents don't believe that something other than what they think is going on is going on. You know, what, what the hell do they think happened with Jesse? Do they think that the other guard, the other prisoner jammed his fist through his stomach or something, just, I don't know, they're just really not looking at all the facts and accepting what they want to be the case to be true. Maybe they're monotheists, I don't know. The ending, you know, the glove straight through her face being pulled back through the mirror, that was really awesome. And them pulling Freddy back into the real world all the way and then attacking him, chopping off his hand, that was a good idea. That worked. That Asian kid, how did he upload that video that ends with him evidently being taken over by Freddy and smashing his face against, face against the video camera? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how that quite worked out. You know, if... I mean, and the video seemed to end there. If he, like, directly uploaded as he was recording, why didn't the video keep going? Would it maybe be removed? I don't know. Anyway, those are my thoughts on... A Nightmare on Elm Street 2010. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.